in the rule of St. Benedict, when he speaks about Lent, he talks about uh, for the life of the monk that Lent should be every day. Every day is Lent for, for the monk. And I think he's making a very important point, which I could tie into when I look at uh, the rule of Benedict, the, the whole importance of that ongoing conversion, conversatio morum, that it's not something that's just limited to a particular time. It, it's something that's always part of the life of the monk. And I, and I see that as really two aspects to that. There's the one aspect, which would be that of, of repentance, which is, is part of Lent, uh, to continually look at our lives and to seek the Lord's forgiveness and mercy for our faults and our failings, which is something that as a monk, and I think as everyone, should take time at the end of each day to pause and to look back at that day to see how we have followed the Lord. And if there are areas where we have to come before the Lord seeking his forgiveness. And there's also the aspect, you would say, of fasting or uh, doing something uh, special, which would be uh, a way of helping us to realize how we have a longing for the Lord that, that should be greater than the things in the world around us. There's always that tension that we get very comfortable with what we have here. Uh, we begin to expect things in this life that, that they're gonna make us happy, but ultimately our happiness comes from our presence with the Lord. And our goal is to be with the Lord forever, to share in His glory. And that, that whole sense of fasting is, is part of that, that Lenten practice to help us to be able to be um, more open, making room in our hearts for a deeper appreciation and experience of the Lord's presence. When we speak about fasting, the, uh, the, the church has its rules about fasting during Lent, fasting and abstaining. And it's much easier to really specify what to give up you know, to give up meat, or to give up eating between meals, to, to abstain from meat, to give up eating between meals, uh, as, as a way of focusing universally uh, what people could be doing as far as celebrating Lent. So there's that whole aspect of the fasting, of giving up. But the other aspect, which is more difficult to clearly define because it's become so personalized, is what can someone do for Lent? What extra act can they do? And, and for some people, they're able to go out and uh, take on some of the corporal works of mercy that maybe they don't take on during the rest of the year, but they can look at a particular one and they can work at that. Or maybe there's some particular relationship that they look at and they realize that, that they have to work at, they have to be uh, forgiving towards someone, they have to work at being maybe reconciled or attentive to other people. Uh, so there's that whole aspect of what they're going to do for Lent. For some people, it's giving alms, uh, you know, putting some money aside throughout the season, uh, and it comes in with the sacrifice. Sometimes it's using the money that would be used for some sort of food or maybe some entertainment, and uh, putting that aside and donating that to the poor in, in a way that it's going to help somebody else in, in their own particular need. One of the things that always gets my attention at the beginning of Lent is the, the preface one for Lent. We're in the midst of that preface as we prepare to, to sing the holy, holy with the angels and saints. Is There's a phrase that says during this joyful season of Lent that, that the church itself be, defines joy, uh, Lent as a joyful season. That in the midst of the various, various uh, devotions that we might do, the various different things that we might, acts we might be doing uh, of, of preparing ourselves. It is a preparation and it's ultimately leading us within that season of Lent uh, to enter more fully into the joy of Easter. That as we go through Lent and we go through penance and we can go through fasting, we can go through good and good works, they're just not doing them for, the, for the, themselves, but we're doing them so that they make us more mindful of what's coming in the future. And in the season of Lent, we're more immediately looking at the celebration of Easter, that, that all of this is directing us to enter into the beauty of the resurrection, the, the whole mystery of God's love for us, and uh, being able to allow that to become more and more a part of us. And we do that not just for Lent, but it's really something that should be part of every day of our lives. Lent is the season that, that we designate as a time to focus in a particular way about it, but it's just not the end in itself. It's an entire season that we do it. And actually the church defines each Sunday as a little Easter, as that moment of joy, you know, regardless of what season we're going into or what time of the year it is. That, uh, so the season of Lent is meant to be a, a, have a spirit of joy to it as we look forward to the resurrection of the Lord.
I remember one year I was in a parish and I had a, a young seminarian. He was from Nigeria with me. And uh, he was very excited getting ready for Lent. And we're speaking about Lent, what we're going to do, what we're going to give up. And I love coffee. And I announced, I tell him, I said, you're not going to give up coffee for Lent. And, I, and I said, I've done it before, and you have to prepare for it because you go through withdrawal when you drink a lot of coffee. But I'm going to give up coffee. And we're at some sort of a prayer service or whatever before Lent begins. And uh, this fella gets up talking about preparing for Lent. And he tells the people, pray for Father. He's giving up all caffeine for Lent. And it sort of threw off my plan because I wasn't planning on giving up all caffeine. I was sort of making my plans to have some uh, tea and whatever. But uh, he announced it. And because he announced it, I had to do it. And, uh, and, and it, was, it started off rather difficult. But as I went through it, it was something that really it kept me more mindful than I would have been if I just gave up coffee. The other aspect of that was he announced that we would have adoration every morning in the parish uh, before the 7 o'clock Mass, from 6 until 7. And uh, that every morning we would have that. And I, knowing him, and knowing that it was not uncommon for him to sleep in, that ended up becoming daily devotion to me that I did out of concern that uh, he's not going to be there. No one's going to uh, expose the Blessed Sacrament. So I ended up, I actually had a better record than he is if we're comparing records. But, uh, but that was a very, very, uh, I've had a fulfilling experience of Lent, of, uh, of spending that hour that I really hadn't intended on originally uh, before the Blessed Sacrament, before uh, the 7 o'clock Mass.